a nice walk in the woods here. Um, just making plenty of noise because <laughs> I'm on my own. And uh, you never know where there might be a bear. Not that I'm particularly worried about bears, but I think it's good to make plenty of noise. I'm then into a bunch more rapids and stuff and I don't want to be going down there tonight. It's going to be getting dark. Almost an Ask Paul Kirtley rant there. A bit of, for those of you that are hankering after those. <laughs> yeah, I just don't like the, I know it sounds a bit wishy-washy, but I just don't feel like the feel of the place. towards the end of Short Lake and you can see some of that behind me just about I don't know, three or four K along this lake um, it's starting to curve around I'm gonna head down towards Canyon Rapids which is a portage but um, this is really nice um, there's very little breeze to contend with today the sky is actually clearing there's fewer clouds in the sky than there were first thing this morning and um, I've got a little bit of a tailwind uh, at times there's no chop on the lake. Um, I'm sitting um, first time on a lake on this trip I felt like I could sit rather than kneel. These seats are quite high in these Eskif prospectors which means your centre of gravity is quite high when you're sitting um, and also it's not so comfortable to kneel because your legs are at quite a steep angle down to your knees um, and it puts more pressure on your knees but I've been kneeling pretty much the whole trip um, and I've had to sort of work tactically uh, to stay out of the wind on some days as you've seen. Um, today it's the first day I've had any sense of tranquility on this trip I have to say. Um, it's felt a bit foreboding until now. Strong winds, quite cold wind at times, um, choppy water even on the flat water sections. Um, whereas today um, beautiful sunny blue sky this section of river I think is prettier anyway. It's got a bit more uh, rock, uh, it's a bit deeper in the channels, it feels less flat, um, the landscape feels less flat and uh, it's a bit more interesting I think is also um, one of the things about it. The rock formations here are quite interesting, the trees are a bit higher up and it feels like there's a bit more texture to the landscape. Even so the weather is making a big difference today. It feels like a nice peaceful trip at the moment and uh, it's the first time it has. This is day six and I feel like I've kind of settled down but also the weather's settled down which is good. Anyway I'm going to go around and find this uh, Canyon Rapids portage and, uh, and do that and uh, crack on. Nice woodland on this portage trail. Going around Canyon Rapids, trails in decent condition, bit of birch bark, gonna nab a bit of that for setting a fire later on. Um, when I've got my hands free, this is a nice trail 
nice birch woods, a bit of alder, a bit of hazel. Yeah, it was a little bit difficult finding the beginning of the Portage Trail. I went a bit far down actually, too close to the rapids and then came back up again. Um, I guess when the flow's higher, you can't get that close to the rapids. Um, and as Hap Wilson's guide rightly states, um, it's a little bit misleading because the beginning looks like an easy enough uh, grade two, class two rapid, um, if anything, at this level, it looks even less than that. And then it looks like a nice run down, but apparently there's a big ledge at the bottom, which he puts at class five. I haven't seen that yet, but I can certainly hear something now, just there, and if you can too. So we'll see it at the end of the portage, I'm sure. But anyway, it's a nice walk in the woods here. Um, just making plenty of noise, because <laughs> I'm on my own. And, uh, you never know where there might be a bear. Not that I'm particularly worried about bears, but I think it's good to make plenty of noise when you're walking along on trails that aren't used very often by people because animals also use the trails and uh, it's good just to make plenty of noise. And here we are at the end of the portage. This is the bottom of Canyon Rapids. Um, Hap has this as a class five ledge. Um, I'm not sure it's class five, but I'm still happy not to run it. Um, quite a lot of recirculation, looks like a little weir, um, not so pleasant. And certainly a lot less benign than the class one to two that's running into it. Um, yeah, and happy to stretch the legs on the portage again and avoid that altogether. This area here above Beaver Dam is absolutely beautiful. I actually stopped at the end of Canyon Rapids for lunch, but I wish I'd stopped here. This is the center island, which apparently has a portage over it, but I'm just going to check out the rapids. This is the left-hand side, see whether or not there's any opportunity. It uh, looks like there's a bit of a drop, but if there's any opportunity for lining, save me hauling everything out of the boat again. This is the right hand chute here. That's really pretty. So Hap has this in his guide and this isn't meant to be turning into a Hap guide critique, but he's got this down as two to three. Um, that's the right hand channel, that's not a three, that's a four to five, so, but rapids can change, they get washed out when they get bigger, so with more flow they can be less of an issue, and with less flow they can become more of an issue and vice versa, so not being overly critical but all I'm trying to say is when you're paddling a river with variable flow rate, rates, which of course they do, um, based on someone's experience at one time of the year, just be a little bit wary. This would be a really nice campsite here. Um, Imagine this for the view, but it's too early in the day for me to stop. Got to make some more distance. Well, I'm a happy chappy uh, for two reasons. One is 
split shoot falls which is kind of very emphatically uh, stated as do not run in the guidebook um, and absolutely looking at the the rightmost and leftmost shoot so that you wouldn't want to run it the middle shoot over there is not running and next to that is where the suggested 15 meter portage is um, but there's this little ancillary chute here which is still running a little bit I managed to paddle into that having to avoid going down one of the main chutes but paddle into that powered into that jumped out and then just lined down this little drop here which saved me getting all my gear out for the sake of a 15 meter portage so that's one reason why I'm a happy chappy the second reason I'm a happy chappy is because I'm around about, and I'll show you the map, I'm around about, well I know I'm, I'm exactly here, just below um, a split shoot, just here, um, and I'm around about the 85k mark, I might actually just be below it, but 90 there, can you see that, there's a big shadow I'm casting, 90 there, 80 there, so about 85 there, below eight, uh, split shoot. Um, where I started was 170 so that's the halfway mark really for this journey and I'm on I'm in the middle of day six and so that's bang on time um, it does mean I can't really let up with the with the pace it would be nice to have a day off or something but I think I'm just gonna have to keep pushing on um, I've covered half the distance and half the time I'm going to keep pushing through and this is quite slow going some of this stuff having to stop and look and see where you're going and figure out how you're going to get the boat through or carry it all through that takes time and it slows you right down so I'm just going to keep pushing through there's a lot more stuff to come um, in this section here um, all the way through there are some sections that don't have a lot of rapids in but um, it's going to be uh, demanding for a little while I think. I'm really enjoying it. This, this section is really pretty. It reminds me of some of the area around the French River when it drops down through Big Pine and Little Pine Rapids. That area um, really pretty and I'm really enjoying the scenery at the moment. This is Opikwach Rapids, 27 in HAPS guidebook. As he says class two to three with volume stacks. It's definitely what it is. Um, there's probably a very tight line. <laughs> it's a brave, I would say on the right hand side of the tongue and staying out the stacks and fill it all the way down, but there's a heavy boil line. Um, not sure I'd be brave enough to do that. Well, certainly I'm not brave enough to do that on my own. Um, not stupid enough to try that on my own. Margin for success is too slim. Um, I just came down here. I just lined it on two ropes down the side here. Just pulled it through. It was easy, easy peasy. I wish I'd filmed it because it was sort of textbook really. Yeah, Opikwach Rapids. Um, I like it, I like looking at that tongue. But this is full flow of the river again. So 
even back there at the falls where I lined, that wasn't the full river. This is the full river again. Smooth Rock Falls, 28 in Haps Guide. This is the uh, portage landing for small, for small, for smooth rock falls. First actual portage trail marker I've seen. Um, but anyway, it's just a short portage through there if you're going to portage it. If there's more water in this little side channel, as Haps Guide suggests, you can line on the right, but it's undercutting the rock there. The boat would just get wedged there at the moment. A bit more water, you could do it. A bit more water, a bit further at the rock. Or if, if there was water coming through this here, that would probably line quite nicely as well. The rock is definitely smooth, um, but you don't want to be paddling that over there, that's for sure, or lining it. <laughs> but that is uh, probably my last obstacle, uh, not really obstacle, but feature for the day. Um, I've got about, there is a camp here, but it's already in the shade. Um, the weather's good, the wind is low, I'm gonna keep going. It's uh, 20 to six at the moment, but it's really warm. I'm gonna chuck some more sunscreen on, it's that warm. And I'm hoping to get about 5K further down where there's a couple of campsites marked on Haps books, on these maps. Um, but anyway, it's kind of clear river now. There's no real wind, there's a little bit of a breeze from the south. Um, it's lovely and warm. And I'm just gonna, I'm feeling good. I'm gonna have a slurp of water put some more sunscreen on, quick cereal bar, reload the boat, which is here, um, and yeah, try and cover five or six K more um, while the going's good. Make hay while the sun shine, shines even, as they say. I do need a cereal bar, but I'm feeling good. And this is beautiful, look at this. Getting on in the day a little bit, um, but it's, it's still gorgeous. Um, I need to stop in the next hour, really, realistically. Um, there is a camp spot marked on Haps Guide in this area. I thought this might be a suitable spot. Um, it's like a little rocky outcrop. Uh, I've just checked the top. I've just checked the top. There's no flat spot, even for a one-man tent. And this looks like uh, it was a rapid at one point, but I think quite a while ago, because it's quite a wide corner bend of the river now. Um, interestingly though, the reason I got the camera out really, just what I spotted as I was about to get back in my boat, there's a little skull, a part of a skull, part of a jaw of a beaver. You can see the, the teeth there, like little chisels. This is not a very big one, I've, I've seen bigger than this. Um, skulls that I found, but that just a little one, two halves there, and the, and the continuously growing teeth all the way through, They're like little chisels. <laughs> just saw a beaver back there actually. Uh, there's a lodge, and gave me a really good slap on the water warning sign. But I'm going to crack on. It's pretty benign at the moment, it's nice, but I don't have a ton of daylight left now. I've got like two hours at most of daylight left, and um, slightly less probably. But there's hardly any breeze. Compared to a few days ago when I was fighting the wind for the last few hours of the day, and getting into camp earlier than this, really tired. Um, this is really nice, just making some good distance. But I do need somewhere to sleep. <laughs> it's just after seven now. Don't have a lot of sun. Where's the sun? Can't do that. Uh, don't have a lot of time left now. 
today and I don't know whether to push on in the hope that there's maybe a campsite at White Beaver Falls there's nothing marked on the map in the guidebook and not that the guidebook is the be all and end all clearly it isn't we've seen that a few times today and it's quite out of date in a lot of ways um, but like the portages that I've done that have had campsites on have had campsites marked on the map there are some portages like uh, canyon rapids that I did today like night owl rapids that I did on the first day uh, or the second day um, first full day I guess um, that have no port have have no camps on the portage and there's no camp marked on those portages so I'm a bit wary of portages with no camps marked on them because it probably means they haven't got them on and certainly um, anecdotally so far the ones that have got camps on them they're marked on the map as portages with camps on them so the next thing is White Beaver Falls 70 meter portage might have a camp on it but if it hasn't I'm then into a bunch more rapids and stuff and I don't want to be going down there tonight it's going to be getting dark so I've got to I'm going to go and check this out quickly see if there's somewhere to get a tent up certainly no shortage of firewood um, and then make a quick decision about what I'm going to do right well I've just been up there uh, it is very overgrown doesn't look like there's ever been a camp up there for well I mean there are a few little flat spots but are full of trees um, apart from a bit right at the end there that's full of lichen that you could get a tent in but there's not even space for a fire site there um, in case you're kind of thinking oh well it's just some dumb British guy um, coming to Canada um, I'm speaking from the point of view of having paddled uh, the blood vein using um, Hap Wilson's guides Miss and I be using Hap Wilson's guides kind of familiar with kind of his uh, iconography for big campsites and small campsites and tiny campsites and um, this is just a bit different the Barons um, to uh, what I've experienced using his guides on other rivers um, and also the cadence as I say the cadence of the actual camps um, they just don't seem to be um, equally spaced it's a little bit like steps in in castles you know Norman castles he would put the steps um, rhythmically and then they break the rhythm so that people run up steps like attacking would trip over and it feels a little bit like that you kind of get into a rhythm with the camps somehow and then there isn't a camp or there are too many and then there are none for a while um, and so it feels a bit like that today um, but I've looked from the top there and there's some bare rock on the other side of the river and that might be an option um, it looks more like it's got more potential than this I'm reluctant to go further frankly I need the daylight to um, cook a little bit and set up camp the mozzies are still out around about dusk and um, they're not bad during the day but they are a pain in the backside still um, once the sun goes down and it starts to get dusky properly dusky so I want to get into camp get a fire going get a b boil on get tent up get sorted by about half past eight and it's now quarter past seven so I'm hoping there's something on the other side uh, with some relief I can say that this is actually all right over here there's some flat spots for tents and actually somebody else has had a fire here at some point there's a little fire thing but clearly not for a while there's there's moss growing in there don't know if you can see moss growing in the bottom of that um, it's on the opposite side of the river to where I was originally looking um, I've just checked to make sure I wasn't being dumb um, and or had been dumb and marked it on my map because I transposed information from Hap's guide onto my onto my map um, as well as information uh, from elsewhere but all the campsites and I marked it there I was like just double check just double check okay I've marked it there but just double check I didn't mark it on the wrong side of the river but no it's definitely marked on the right side of the river 
there's nothing there at all not having a go at hap at all i'm just just saying there isn't so either there was at one point and it's gone hasn't been used or um it's marked on the wrong side of the river on on the guidebook and it was this one he was looking at or maybe people have tried to find the one over there they can't and they've made this one who knows anyway um it's all part of the adventure all part of the adventure well this is my home for the night i'm going to get sorted out the sun is not very far above the horizon now I'm going to get sorted and get a fire going and make my home for the night Well, that was uh, pretty good. Sun's just setting there, you can see. Um, I boiled four litres of water. What's really interesting, actually, this is catching my attention, is the wind, there wasn't much of a breeze before, but there's something changed with the wind because the next set of rapids that I said that I might have to go down to, where there's a 70 metre portage, there could be a camp, I didn't know. All of a sudden I can hear it. Whereas the whole time I've been here, which is about an hour, I haven't heard it. And literally just five minutes ago, as the sun was hitting the horizon, something changed with the air. Um, th at one point this was completely mirror calm. There's actually ripples on it now. so this, Something changed with the way that the air's blowing around, which is interesting. You notice these things when you're on your own, when you haven't got other people around you talking and things. But yeah, I've been efficient. I've uh, had a good fire, fast fire, boiled four litres of water, simple meal again tonight, backpacker's pantry. That's been on reconstituting 20 minutes. It's curry with rice and cashews and chicken which sounds pretty good um, I used a coffee pot again to boil some more water same time as boiling a couple of litres in the Coleman pot I've got a cup of tea lemon and ginger that stash lemon and ginger tea is potent it's sharp I chuck a bit of honey in that get some more fluids down me 750 ml there um, got plenty of water to chuck in my water bottles overnight what bottle there, what bottle there. This looks a bit of a mess. I hate barrels, but they serve a purpose. They're messy. Um, 
and nothing packs in them particularly well but they keep the smells in they keep the water out um, they wipe clean <laughs> ah yeah got my tent up all my sleeping kits out everything's sorted so yeah in less than an hour I am pretty much sorted so I'm gonna eat my drink my tea eat my dinner pack up for the day get a bit of firewood for the morning and hit the sack before the mozzies come out This morning I have got uh, some birch bark, I've got lots of little frilly bits, lots of really gossamer thin paper bits, so I'm thinking not even needing to scrape that up, you see all these little ends, these tassel ends, um, probably could get a spark into that, I've got a little bit of a hearth down, I did have a fire in there last night, um, just chucked a few dry sticks in there, some of which are covered in lichen. Uh, there's no great advantage to that, particularly not in the morning because they can hold a bit of moisture, but it's just dry sticks and there's a lot of them with lichen on here. Got my got my little sticks ready to go over top of the birch bark and then I've got some larger ones. So I'll just see if I can get a spark into here somewhere. There we go. Let that get going a little bit. And then small sticks off the jack pine it's mainly jack pine on this spot they go in and then I've got some bigger sticks off the jack pine let the flames come through that some bigger sticks still which are all very dry These are side branches off a fallen dead tree, which I know from, again, jack pine, which I know from previous experience tend to be quite resinous and they go quite nicely. And that's that, that's the fire. Uh, wooden pilings or piles or stanchions or whatever they are is the route of the winter road I don't know if it's still used or not because there's a road all the way up to the Barrens River Indian Reserve now up the east side of Lake Winnipeg um, you can see the route through the trees there similar to the one on the blood vein there's 
when the blood vein is low enough you can see remains of a kind of wooden bridge structure um, coming across from that side as well Winter Road and that corresponds here on the map Winter Road up there and maybe this bit is still used I honestly don't know that doesn't look massively overgrown in there but anyway coming up to the 70k mark soon Sharp Rock Falls, I think that will be lunch. So there's, just before 31 and 32, there's an island, there's no mention of swifts in Hap's Guide, but there are some swifts either side of the island coming in, and then it's a class one into the class three, which I haven't seen yet, apparently it's there, it's a 225 portage, I'm not even going to worry about checking it, I'm just going to portage it. Alright, so this is the class one coming into what Hap says is a class 3 um, could be a class 3 certainly I can see how it would be volume class 3 at higher volumes um, to be honest having looked at it from here and from lower down there are a couple of big waves there and it certainly needs it isn't just a simple big class 2 because there's a bunch of rock there you need to avoid on the way out so it would require some manoeuvring there's a big wave train so I think it probably does merit class 3 certainly class 2 technical that said don't think it's too difficult it's not too big um, I'd be almost tempted to run that if I was here tandem pair I'd probably run that Certainly if there were a number of boats, I'd run it. Um, but given that I've already got all my gear out and I've portaged, at least portaged one load through before I'd even seen this. And it's like, do I run the boat through empty? I actually prefer running boats like the Prospector 16 through not empty because they're quite big when they're empty. Um, there's, there's no buoyancy in them. There's no buoyancy uh, bags. Uh, there's no kneeling thwart. You're not very connected with the boat. The center gravity is quite high when they're unloaded, particularly when you're paddling solo. It's windy. Um, so maneuverability into the rapid might be a bit um, So just, just port carrying on portage. There is a short portage around the rock here, but I don't want to load my boat there because certainly not solo. Might be doable when you were tandem if somebody could hold the boat while you pass stuff down, but it's just awkward. I had a look from above and you can land above that. There's a trail of sorts that comes down. So the, the, the level that you land at is pretty much up there and up, a little bit below that, you've got to climb up to that just a touch. But then there's a trail that comes down through the woods, but it's quite awkward at the top, very overgrown with uh, jack pine and some few spruce, mainly jack pine. Um, but a trail comes down through the birch here to here. So what I'm thinking is haul the gear down through here, because it would be awkward to get the boat through the trees and up and down the rock and then down the trail and then take the boat empty to that little portage take the boat straight over hop in paddle down here land here put the gear in here where it's an easy load and then off 
down the river. I think that's the option I'm going to take. So I've brought my first lot of stuff through. I've double checked on the map. Okay, so the last thing that's here, that was what I ran, um, Meti Kaka Pisawind Rapids there. He's got that and it's a two to three. I thought it was at most a one technical, maybe a two if it was flushing through hard. Then we've got Kaministikoskak Falls, which is this. And I was a bit curious because it says falls on the map. You can see I've actually underscored it. Haps even got a campsite marked here. But if you look in his guidebook, so we've got all the stuff we've done today, 32, 33, Pine Island Rapids back there, Sharp Rock Falls, that's all in, yeah, coming along. And it's this sort of, kind of makes sense, but it's horrible to read, kind of map within a map within a map that he does, which it makes sense when you draw it, but I'm, it, it's really, particularly since all the information isn't repeated on each map, it's actually a real pig to read, I find. Um, but anyway, um, 31 was Sharp Rock Falls, yeah, um, that's all fine. Then through here, Mitik, that's here. So he's got 34 Metic Rapids, okay? So that's this one, 34, which I've marked, okay? The next one, 35, which is on my map, I'll just double check I haven't missed anything. Yep, 35 Old Fort Falls. So that's way down there. And he's just got Swifts in here. Well, despite my slight annoyance at uh, the guidebook not mentioning this little river feature, um, it just goes to show um, you've got to take responsibility for your own safety. I'm not in any way kind of passing blame. I just think it's kind of odd that that would be missed out. I think that maybe the grading has been shifted back to the previous one or something. I don't know. Who knows? But anyway, what it does show is that you've got to take responsibility for your own safety. Um, the guidebook is a guide. You've got to look and scout. Things change anyway. Um, some of the rapids on this river have certainly been a lower grade than marked in the guidebook. Some have actually been a higher grade and that happens. Some rapids get washed out when the water is higher. Some get more technical when the water is lower. It's just the, the way it happens. Um, I'm glad to say that my strategy here worked. I carried my gear through on the trail. I paddled my boat to the edge of this little lip of rock, carried the boat through, literally five meters, dropped it down the other side, jumped in, paddled down the side of the chute here, just landed, and now I'm gonna power my gear back in and head off down this lovely stretch of river. So, bit sweaty, bit of a, definitely a bit of an assault course day today. Lots of in and out the boat, carrying stuff. This is 36, class Rapids that, yeah, the rapids that Hap says forget it. Clearly, at times there's a lot more water coming down here. There's two channels. The other channel, there's no real information on. I think there's a class five in it. I looked down it. Seems like there's really steep sides. You don't know if there's anywhere to get off. Um, there's supposedly a short portage here somewhere, but. My boat's back there at the moment. Um, I'm gonna see if there's a lining option actually where, where there is actually any water. Because this is this is like a f***ing obstacle course. Nothing flowing down this bit either. You can see that at some point there's gonna be something 
interesting going on here, but at the moment not. So it's just finding a way through from the boat, which is over here, um, over that way, I think, through to where the water begins again. But that the positive side of this is that that's me through. I'm gonna look at the camera. Yeah, the positive side of this is once I'm through this, that's kind of what I've termed the assault course part of this trip done, really. Um, this day has been sort of in and out of the boat, um, multiple portages, having to assess every single drop, rapid, etc., because they're not quite as described, which is fine. You, you, you're not going to just go on what's in the book anyway. We've talked about that already. Um, yesterday was in some ways more fun. I managed to frig quite a lot of lines using, you know, using the, either one line or two lines to get the boat through. Today I've not managed to line anything and so it's, I've run a few class ones, uh, class two, um, a few bits and pieces, swifts and things, but um, it's largely just been getting stuff out of the boat and lugging it and often just short distances, which just feels like you feel like you cheated, like a portage should be some distance <laughs> rather than just humping it over some rocks and putting it back in again. Um, which is why I think it feels a bit like a, an assault course and this, this kind of takes the biscuit, this bit. Um, it was supposed to be a 25 metre portage. Um, I can't see at the moment where the portage trail starts, although I'd imagine it's over there on the right hand side somewhere. Um, but either way, I'm just going to find somewhere where I can carry my stuff through over the dried up channel. Um, take a bag through and then take everything else through and crack on um, before the day gets too late. Well I found the portage um, which is up on the rocks just up there as expected on the right. Um, I can actually walk down the dry channel here though which is more direct to the end. Um, I did think about camping here originally. There is a camp of sorts or camp, like an open spot on the rocks up at the top there and um, it's okay but it's in the shade now um, although there's a breeze going through it which is good for the bugs so I did consider it but then I got down to the end of it and there's there's a real kind of mess there um, which put me off I have to say and also you know for a, a camp that's next to some falls some rapids this has no moving water and kind of feels dead um, in a slightly morbid sort of way. Um, feels like the sort of land that the river forgot. It's all dried up. There's no flow through here, you can see. Yeah, you can see all the sculpting of the rock from the water flow and I'm walking down the channel here of where the water would be. You can see the walls there, I think. Um, which is quite fun in a way. But, um, yeah, I just don't like the, I know it sounds a bit wishy-washy, but I just don't feel like the feel of the place. And um, particularly, as I'll show you in a second, somebody's made a right, I'm just climb up here a little bit. Um, somebody's made a right mess. On this end, I'll just quickly show you. Don't wanna to waste too much battery on this, but, I mean, it would be a really quite cool place and I can see why people hang out here, although we're 60 kilometers from the end of the river, but there's like plastic forks and spoons, there's tin cans all over the place. Um, I don't know how long they've been here. Uh, tins of fish and, you know, aesthetically it's not great. There's an actual tin over the left there. Another tin. But somebody's come out with plenty of food um, I almost wonder if, sort of tins of corned beef maybe, I um, wonder if this pole has been used to put maybe a tarp over this area. There's a nice platform to sit on. The, the nicer camping area is at the top there, but it overlooks this. And yeah, it's kind of put me off. And also just from a practical point of view, if somebody's leaving food lying around here, you don't know where the bears have got used to coming and sniffing around. I don't know, how, that looks not, doesn't look particularly new, but even so, um, I'm not particularly enamoured with the place, um, so somebody's written Ken there 
in the rocks. Some of these are in Ed up there in the rocks. I think somebody's tried to spell something here with pondweed, which is, I guess, quite artistic. Unless it's just me reading too much into stuff, but it looks like somebody's tried to create something with pondweed and it's all dried out. But anyway, I'm going to pass through. I'm not going to hang around here, I don't like it. It's got a slightly odd feel to it. I know today I've been talking a lot about, well, the past few days, about rapids and lining and Hap's guidebook and all of those sorts of things. And you probably haven't even seen me do a lot because I've been doing it and I haven't always been able to film it. Um, uh, even the things I've run, like ones and twos, you know, swifts and things, I haven't necessarily stopped to film it. Um, but what I wanted to show you here was just how the the river now that we're out of that kind of so-called assault course section, it's broadened out. Um, it's lovely, you've got a mixture of uh, spruces, there's probably some balsam fir in there, I haven't checked. Um, there's uh, some birch, there's stands of white poplar, and it's just really, really nice. And in the evening sunshine, um, it's stunning. And yeah, it's kind of really nice and tranquil and relaxing after all of that, you know, in and out of the boat and lugging gear through the bush and hauling canoes over things and lining and all that stuff. It's This is nice to be back into. I do need to find a campsite though. There is supposed to be one just around the bend here. But we know how that plays out sometimes, don't we? So we will see. We will see. But if I don't find this one again, I don't know what I'm good, what I'm doing. Um, I really didn't like that one back at that last rapid. So it was a mess. It had a weird feel to it. Um, so yeah, I'm gonna go and find this one. Nearly seven o'clock though now. Happy to say, I think I have found my camp. I can see some rock little rock assemblies on here and this is where it says it is in Hap's guide it's like a little rock bluff somewhere to land it's not in the sun unfortunately but I will get the sun in the morning um, I do need a wash so I think I'm gonna get up as the sun's rising it'll be nice and warm here on this side have a good wash before setting out for the day tomorrow it's gonna be a long day tomorrow so I need a good feed tonight Anyway, this is looking like a camp for the night. Great view from this place. Um, one of the things I find a little bit difficult about the Boreal is, particularly tr river travel in the Boreal, is that you can't really see very far a lot of the time. Um, there's no height of land that you can get onto to really see. And so, like some of the camps where you're up on a bluff, it's really nice. Like the other night when I was near Child's Falls, I could see a little bit further over the tops of some of the trees and that's nice. This type of spot is really nice as well where you get into the more marshland um, and this is what I've got ahead of me tomorrow. Um, this is lovely along here. So Gone is the assault course and here we are back into tranquility, which is really very nice. You've got wild rice along the side there again um, and looking lovely in the, in the evening sunshine. It's amazing how the character of these rivers changes. You were only a few kilometers down from that class five rapid that I'd last portaged around and then of course there was a portage across the dried up riverbed but the character really changes very quickly and uh, that's one of the things I really like about traveling here but as I say 
one of the things that I find difficult is you can't really see beyond the next bend a lot of the time. So when you when you do when you do get up a little bit, look at my hair. I've got hat hair. I've had a tilly hat on all day. Um, not that anybody gives a shit, but um, uh, yeah, just. It's really nice just to get up and see and see a bit into the distance and um, yeah, soak it in a little bit more. Gets a bit claustrophobic. Even though you're in a massive space, it kind of gets a bit claustrophobic somehow. Um, but yeah, this is nice. Go back and see how that fire's doing. See if it's died down enough to get the grill on top. Yeah, I'm glad, I'm glad I found this campsite. It's, a, it's one of the better campsites. Um, a lot of them are quite scrappy. You feel, hear that wind as we come around the corner. That's great as well because it's keeping the insects. Might, might mean you can't hear me very well on the microphone, but it's keeping the insects at bay. It's nearly eight o'clock and nearly mozzy o'clock. Well, water's all boiled. My four litres or so of water. A few old tin cans from the fire there. I'm, probably going to pack those out with my trash. Um, I've got the still on dehydrated stuff. But I've got the Cuban style coconut rice and black beans which is one of my favorites from Backpackers Pantry. No connection but I do like these. And this one is 420 calories per 111 grams so that's like per half portion. Yep so that means there's 840 calories in this packet which is good. It's not a massive meal but better than the 500 or so in the one that I had last night and I think that's maybe why I was feeling a bit low. Um, I'm also going to do a big load of eggs in the morning. Um, I've got some dehydrated eggs to try so I'm going to do those in the morning with a couple of wraps so that's the plan for the morning. I'm going to let that settle now go and put my tent up before the mozzies come out and that's me kind of set for the night so that's probably me signing off for the day it's been a long day covered uh, about 18k I think I haven't totted it up properly but a lot of in and out of the boat portaging and carrying stuff and yeah feels like a hard day today um, harder than I thought it was going to be but now I have got a clear run um, apart from Moose Falls, not to be confused with Big Moose Falls, um, coming about halfway through tomorrow. I'm going to aim for uh, Upper Conjuring Falls tomorrow night for a camp. Uh, so about 20k tomorrow, I think. At least I'm about just gone past the 60k mark to go. And I want to do 20 tomorrow, and that leaves me then um, 40, clearly. But then I can then do 10k a day through some really nice campsites and spend a bit more time fishing, a bit more time. Uh, I've got some pan breads and things to make that I haven't touched really yet. Um, so I can spend a bit more time in camp. I've been really kind of getting up and going, um, going all day and getting into camp quite late the past few days um, to get through this section where there's a lot of uh, rocky drops and falls that you can't paddle in quite quick succession really and I've got through that section now uh, past few days um, and I'm glad but I'm quite tired now and feel a bit frazzled it's been sunny and windy uh, but I'm, I'm enjoying it it's good it's good I, I might not seem like it quite now because I'm a bit tired and hungry but uh, I am enjoying being here um, it's a very complete environment um, it has a wholeness to it somehow you know like back home even in other parts of Canada, you know, there's farms, there's fences, there's roads. The land is kind of dissected and intersected and, and parceled and bundled and uh, sectioned and partitioned and bits are owned by people and there's access and no access. And here it's, it's just the land and there's no sectioning. There's no, um, there's no partitioning. There's no roads. The nearest to a road was that winter road that we passed earlier today. Uh, and a 12 15k back um so yeah it's just there's a completeness it's it's a complete ecosystem and there's very little interference the thing that's disappointed me i have to say i'm gonna move out the breeze here a little bit just in case it's affecting the microphone um the thing that's disappointed me really um is that 
where there has been signs of uh, human um, activity, uh, not talking about the cabins, there's a few cabins along here and, and they're all quite tidy, um, but on some of the campsites there's a lot of garbage. I'm surprised because I've paddled the Blood Vein a few times, which is a river a bit to the south of this. South of this you've got the Pigeon and then south of that's the Blood Vein. And the Blood Vein's a similar kind of nature river to this. Um, but it's a lot more pristine in, in the campsites, even though the campsites are more well used. Like the campsites here, some of them are overgrown, they're not well used at all. Um, and as I say, some of them are quite scrappy. And it's clear that there, that there isn't the amount of traffic through here that there is on the, on the blood vein. Um, but there's more mess here than there is, like I've, the Miss and Ivy is a lot more well traveled. And I'm gonna be on the Miss and Ivy next after this. Um, almost directly after this. The last time I did the Miss and Ibe a couple of years ago, or the section of Miss and Ibe from Miss and Ibe Lake to Matice, there was a bit of trash sometimes in some of the campsites. But you get groups of kids going down there, um, quite big groups of kids. Uh, and, it, you know, I found like, uh, you know, uh, candy wrappers stuffed in the bottom of trees and things a couple of times and there was a bit of trash, but not a lot. Here, there's like cans and beer cans and there was that, island at the top with all the garbage on it and you know I don't know who's doing that um, I wouldn't like to say who's doing that but there's a different attitude on this river at some of the people who are accessing this river clearly to some of the other rivers um, it's a bit of a shame because it's so pristine otherwise I mean it's absolutely pristine there's nothing here and um, there's a few cabins um, but yeah and I, I've seen one other canoe and that was a pair coming upstream, and that was on my first day, and that was at the top of um, Night Owl uh, Rapids Portage. Um, I didn't get a video or a photo or anything with them, I kind of wish I had now, but um, Jason and Paula, if you're out there, hi. Um, nice to meet you and have a chat with you for a while. And I'm looking forward to checking out the campsites a bit further down, that's one of the reasons why I'm kind of chunking up the journey now. Um, on some of your recommendations for the lower campsites so yeah it's uh, it's absolutely fantastic and as i say it's just slightly blighted by some of this trash issue it's weird so far out of so far from anywhere like that campsite back there is more than 60 kilometers from the end of the river um and it's 110 kilometers from family lake and yet there's a load of trash in it it's like, why do you haul trash? Why do you haul stuff all the way out here and then just leave it? It's just peculiar. Um, anyway, almost an Ask Paul Kirtley rant there. Bit of, for those of you that are hankering after those. <laughs> I'm going to go and put my tent up. Good night. Well, there were some uh, big thunderstorms through the night, um, big crashes of thunder over the top of my tent, heavy rain, and there's still quite a stiff breeze this morning. Thankfully, it's still coming out of the south, so it looks quite windy here, but when you go around the corner, 
um, into the channel which is largely northwest. It's relatively sheltered on this side. So I think I'm going to still be able to get away um, and make some distance today without the wind causing me too much problem. I'm not convinced I'm not going to get rained on though. Um, just uh, the way the weather system seems to have changed. But uh, yeah, that's the relatively flat water day. Should be sheltered. The wind, if it changes direction, might cause a problem. We'll see. Look at that. Dehydrated egg, crystals, and I've added bacon bits. And I've just cooked that up. And I've got a wrap, wholemeal wrap ready to go. Got my coffee. Got a whole pot of coffee. That's going to set me up for today, for sure. It's a great event today. It's kind of these thunderheads bubbling around. Don't have a lot of moving water, but I do have some swifts here. Um, see, better put the camera away and get in line on these. Maybe why it's called pyramid. Rapids, <laughs> even though there aren't really any rapids here at the moment. Okay, another portage done. I know this might be a bit boring me talking to the camera all the time, but I've actually got some distance to cover. I'm not kind of one of these YouTubers that spends all day filming in the same spot. I've actually got 20 odd kilometers to cover today. Just done this portage. It's quite a, I could have set a camera up, but I'm running low on battery. Um, all the gear, nearly 200 meters across the top of these rocks. Um, down, down here, down here and across here. So I've got everything all my stuff through, it's behind, boat, um, and now it's out there on something which is, yeah, one, grade one at the moment. It says two in the guidebook, but it looks like grade one. Bottom of Moose Falls there. The, not big moose, just moose. Um, yeah, that's my major obstacle for today. Um, I'm gonna keep going, it's quite humid. It's quite windy, you can see the wind blowing the boat around. I've just got to be careful about securing the boat when I stop. But yeah, that's that, that's that done. Onwards. Well this is nice. Just coming round to uh, the northerly section of the river where I'm headed north for a couple of K and I've pretty much got a tailwind now um, which is blowing me along quite nicely. And. Uh, probably hear the wind in the trees, maybe you can hear the wind in the microphone as well. Still quite bright today, it's that kind of diffuse, high cloud kind of brightness, but strong, strengthening southerly wind that's blowing me along. I'm hardly having to do any paddling here at all, um, which is quite nice. But I am paddling when I'm not holding the camera, because I want to make good time, but yeah. So I'm just above, just above Upper Conjuring Falls here and there's a big area of, of burn um, and the purple flowers in there are fireweed. That's how it gets its name. Um, Rose Bay Willow Herb is the other name of course. I'm in a twist in the river that puts me back on a almost southward track and you can see what the, the headwind's doing, I think. Uh, it's quite windy, and this is only a short amount of water. Uh, there's not a lot of fetch here, and it is pushing it along. That's going upstream. Pushing it along quite quite well. It's, it's all right, it's just gusting quite a bit. I've just come into a little cut in the, the rock here just to get a little rest. Um, just debating whether to to go around there and into the lee or whether just to ferry across there and cut across there. It's all right when it's not gusting. 
and then I'm just about lower Conjuring Falls. I've just had a couple of trees blow down on me over here as well. It's a massive crack. The wind gusts caught the tops of a couple and just took them off. These dead trees that have been killed by the forest fire. So yeah, it's uh, it's been quite a eventful little section of river, but I'm looking forward to getting to camp. Um, I just hope it isn't completely burned all the way through camp. That would wouldn't be good. I don't know. That might mean more firewood, or it might mean less firewood. I don't know. Um, but yeah, I hope it's not just like a a cinder where the, uh, it's supposed to be a nice campsite overlooking the falls, up of Conjuring Falls. I hope it isn't all just burnt to a cinder. We'll see. Hmm, interesting. Um, you can see the top of uh, Upper Conjuring Falls there. The portage is supposed to start in this channel here, according to the guide. And it's only supposed to be a short portage. I was pootling along here quite happily, deciding whether to land on this shoreline here or just go in there a little bit, but I was a little bit wary because um, I was starting to be conscious of the wind kind of being on my back, which is, it shouldn't be because I'm in a channel that um, is going uh, northwest. Um, but if you look round, it started gusting on my back here, which means the wind swung around to the southeast. Um, weird, weird day of wind today. I mean, when I cut across the channel before, the wind dropped. Um, hasn't been too bad, and now it's just come right back up again, and it's just been gusting and picking the top of the water off. But it's changed direction. So you just have to be careful. I'm not going down there looking for a portage on the edge of a burn on a channel that's hard to land and get a good footing on that close to the top of something you don't want to run with the wind on my back gusting, no bloody way. I'm gonna walk along the shore and find where I need to be. It's a big bloody mess in here at the moment. I'm guessing this is the uh, old portage trail marker, which to be honest is unusual. There's been virtually no marking of portages on this river and I think that's one of the attractions. You've got to kind of work it out yourself. There's been two portages of all the portages I've done um, where there's been a bit of orange tape, no, nothing attached to trees. I think that's what that is. Um, <laughs> this one has seen better days. This is a tangle. I've just walked through a little bit of the forest for about 100 metres, but yeah, it's quite tangly underfoot. Um, it's not clean down the side of the bank here. The trees blown into the water. Um, but I think this is the landing for the portage here. But you can't see this from back there. And it's very close to that. And if it's all like this and you can't land very easily. The wind's died down again now. It's, it's nuts. Um, still can't actually see where the trail is though. Going to have a look first. I could bring the boat down. I've pulled the boat out of the water now because I didn't want to leave it back there just in the wind. There was nothing to tie it to. So I pulled the gear out, lifted the boat up. So it's up in the woods now but carrying it through the woods it's just like a flipping. Somebody's chucked a bunch of matchsticks down and it's really difficult going. There are, looks like there's a landing here but I need to see where the trail is. Cause the, anyway. <sighs> we'll work it out. All right, yeah, somebody's uh, kindly sawn a few bits out of the way here. That's all burned, obviously, but um, yeah, see whether there's anything of a camp here or whether I just carry on. Didn't really want to go any further than this today. I've done 20 kilometers. Um, Done 20 kilometres. Just gone past the 40 kilometre mark. 40 kilometres to go, and I'm on the 24th of August, and I finish on. I've got to be the last camp on the 27th. So I've got 25, 26, 27. I've got three days now, and the last camp is 10k at the end. So I've got 10k a day to do now, which was intentional, because if I get a headwind, 
like the wind's been today, it's going to take me all my time to cover 10k in a day. I'll get a better view of the falls here. But if I go further, that leaves me with not much left to do. But this is a kind of shit campsite now. That that might be an old campfire, I don't know. It's not really a campsite, it's just a burned out mess. I mean, look at this devastation. I mean, this is nature, this is natural. Um, well, whether it was started naturally or not, I don't know, but forest fires are part of the ecosystem here and this does happen. But there's a real, real uh, mess as a result. Um, makes it difficult just to get around. Hmm, this is disappointing. Um, this is the other end of the Portage Trail. See the marker there. Um, it's just a burnout mess up there. I was looking forward to a camp overlooking the falls here. What I have noticed is somebody's been on the other side, but it looks like they've got they've cut. You can see the cut trees over there. Um, and I think they've put them down as rollers for taking a tin boat around, which would make sense. Uh, it's only a short portage over there. Getting my boat through here is actually going to be a bit of a pain in the backside. I'm going to have to go back and work out exactly. Don't think I want to stay here tonight because it's just, like I say, it's, it smells just like a wet, charred, like it smells like a wet ashtray. Um, it rained heavily last night. Um, I'm going to have to look at the map and see what there is coming up. I know there's lower Conjuring Falls coming up, but there's no mention of a camp on that. But it looks like the burn pretty much finishes where I am. If I zoom out, you can see behind here there's this swamp. Um, big eddy with lots of dead wood in it. But then you get to the other side and it's all green again. So. And the same over there, it's all green on the side of this uh, little bay. Um, so I'm thinking this is the extent of the burn and it might be worth just pushing through. But I wanted an early finish today. Sort of, it was four o'clock when I got here. Don't want to push on miles and miles and have another late finish again, frankly. Um, so anyway, I need to work out how to get around this first and then I will make a decision having had a look at the map as to what I'm going to try and do in terms of where I'm going to stay. All right, so having uh, walked back through this portage trail a bit um, and I still haven't got down to the river um, down there, I've got no interest in bringing my boat through here. Um, it's quite heavy, that Esquif 16, and I've got no interest in carrying that on my shoulders through here. Um, it's um, not to put too fine a point on it. What I have noticed though is that's that boat, uh, tin boat portage over there. I don't know whether that, I saw that white cross earlier, I just assumed it was. I've seen white, I've seen crosses like that in other places, sort of memorials and things. I, I just assumed it was something to do with that kind of thing. But it might be the marker for that tin boat portage. Now, if that falls wasn't there, if it was just a, a, a bit of flat water, I'd happily run this into that eddy there. Um, and then I could portage down into there. But I'm not feeling that bold. If I screw that up, and as I say, there's an unpredictable wind that keeps coming up. Um, I don't want to go down there, clearly. So what I did think is I could ferry across to there and I can line the boat down here and then into this eddy and then portage across. That's much cleaner than carrying it through all this crap, even from just down there. My gear at the moment's all the way back up there. There's no way I'm carrying it through. I'd have to paddle down to the, to the old portage eddy pool here anyway. So if I'm going to put my stuff back in my boat, I might as well ferry across up there, line down here, come across here, portage across there and into there, I think. Um, 
that is my current plan. I mean, there's no reason I couldn't stay here other than aesthetics, but um, what I'm more concerned about is just hauling my gear through here at the moment. Um, I'm asking for, well, it's just, it's just difficult. And if I put a foot wrong, I'm gonna twist an ankle with a boat on my head or something. Um, this close to the end of the trip, uh, as I say, I'm 40K from the end of the river now. I'm not gonna risk that. So anyway, that's where I'm at with my thinking now. All right, it's bloody windy again. Um, I did the ferry across, lying down the first bit of country in Falls, down the edge of this, into this eddy. I'm now gonna head over to there, portage the stuff over the top, get the flock out of here. I'm kind of a bit bored with this. That's the crap on the other side where the portage is supposed to be. I don't know whether you can hear what I'm saying because of the wind, but anyway, I can do voiceover over this if uh, if you can't but uh, yeah this is uh, this is wasted a lot of my time or let's say it's consumed a good amount of my time and has been an interesting uh, problem to solve all right so that's that bit done and um, that is a memorial there so I've just sort of said uh, my respects whatever uh, it's for or whoever it's for um, there is a portage here which clearly the locals are using now which makes total sense because the other side is garbage it's just a mess of trees as I've already talked about at length I'm not going to talk about it anymore but there is a portage here someone's cleared it I'm going to use it I'm going to get down into the pool and I'm going to carry on all right end of this little story about finding somewhere to camp uh, that's where the portage should have been that's where the portage should have been that's where I came across I've just paddled across to here I noticed that there was a little camp around here um, somebody's built some nice benches um, and there's like a little wood stand sawhorse there I think that's what that is yep some benches I've just had to sit on them and it's a little strange sitting down after all this time I mean I've been sat in a boat but strange sitting in on a chair so thank you whoever built this and thank you for my stay uh, I have a suspicion it's people from uh, Barons River Indian Reserve um, so Chimigwech for letting me stay here and um, I will leave you more firewood uh, than there is here at the moment before I leave um, but yeah it's a tidy camp it's nice nicely constructed and there's not loads of rubbish around it's it's nice um, so yeah this is where I'm gonna be and that might be the end of my story for today because that's about enough for me I'm gonna cook dinner relax it's 10 to 6 now that whole escapade over there took a while to figure out and um, I did for a moment think about trying to get down to Grey Willow Falls which is another 10k down but after lining around there and paddling across here with the gusty wind I was just like I've had enough of that for one day I really have um, and I don't want to be getting into another camp late like I've done for the past couple of nights I want a bit more time tonight and um, I can get up in the uh, early in the morning and move on and make the most of Grey Willow that way anyway
The fourth part in this series will be the final episode, but the journey is far from over. Join me next time for all this and more. The other thing you might be wondering is why the hell does Kirtley have such a massive coffee pot with him when it's a solo trip? Some of you, maybe you're thinking, well, Kirtley, just camp where you want. I mean, it's a wilderness. It's not even a park. You're on Crown land. True. Um, one of the North American species, very similar to the European. This is all quite ledgy, like drop off. Just saw a black bear. Um, don't know what sex, medium size. Well, just on the Portage Trail around Sturgeon Falls on the left hand side of Sturgeon Falls River left and uh, yeah there was something marked on my old map like there might be a trail and I've come up and it looks like there's a four-wheel drive truck track um, there is a unfortunately quite a lot of rubbish here so I hope that where I'm going is not as messy as this spot um, we'll see rapids that's the last rapid on the river 